Welcome to Pro Mindset Podcast. This is your host, Craig Dillman. This is episode number five, the final episode of 2024 Training Camp. Um, basically, Training Camp Perspective by uh, an agent that's been doing this for 30 years. What we're going to talk about today is the emotional roller coaster of being in an NFL training camp. We're going to talk about some strategies for success. What are some of the things that players can do to maximize their success? And then we're going to end on like the final pets and the repercussions of making it or not making it. Let's start with the emotional roller coaster. Here's the reality. Players typically have been dreaming about playing in the NFL since they were five, seven, eight years old. Then when they went to, let's say they were three star, four star, five star, no star, doesn't matter. They find themselves a centerpiece player in college football. They get drafted or they sign with an NFL team. And now they're in the NFL training camp. This is a dream come true. They are walking into their dream. They're living their dream. They're no longer dreaming about being in the NFL. They are they are in it. Not only are they in it, their family's in it. Maybe their big brother. Maybe their maybe their sister. Maybe their mom. There's other people in it with them. They've got the burden of carrying the family dream. You know, Marvin Harrison Jr. I know he's been thinking about and dreaming about playing in the NFL since he knew what football was because he was watching his dad on TV. He's like, man, my dad can do it. I can do it. He's, he's carrying on. He's carrying the torch of his family on. And then there's a lot of players that their pops never played in the NFL. But they're also carrying the family dream in training camp every single day. They've got grandma praying for them. They've got mom and dad sending them texts. They've got girlfriend or wife, um, you know, connecting with them. Bottom line is that can be a lot of pressure for a player, depending on how he receives that. It's not even a responsibility. It's an opportunity. I think one of the biggest things that affect a player's emotional roller coaster is his past. You know, is he a fourth year player? He's been cut three times and been in the practice squad a couple of years and never played an NFL game yet. And in the back of his mind, he's thinking, this is it. This is my fourth training camp. I got I to gotta make it down. To be a rookie, doesn't know what he doesn't know. And he's like, ah. you know, he's been the he's been the star of the show his whole life. And he can't, he won't be able to handle being on a practice squad. Even though they're making 11, 12,000 a week, it's the embarrassment of not making it that he's not ready for. He's not capable of. He's never had to face before. It hasn't even been in his thought process that it was a possibility. And yet that's it. And that is a real possibility. I think that the fear of failure is a big deal for NFL players. The fear of not making it, the fear of letting people down, the fear of not making the money when you're right on the doorstep of making the money. You know, some of these guys are making 35, 40, 50,000 a game, young players, older guys are making millions a game. Um, Anybody making over 17 million a year is making more than a million dollars a game. Some of the quarterbacks are making three get three million dollars a game or more. Some of those guys, uh, the odds are, at least one of those guys is probably going to get cut. Um, not too many of those guys are going to get cut. Those guys are getting paid fifty million dollars for a reason. But if somebody steps up and they don't step up and they want to move in a different direction, you might see one guy taking a major haircut on his on his salary or or getting let go because nobody's going to trade for that fifty million dollar um, salary. So the emotion, the emotional roller coaster for NFL players during training camp is real. And it doesn't just happen at the end. It happens all the way through. It happens before they get there. It happens every week. It happens every day. And I think that if a player can remember who he is, is different than and separate from what he does, which is play football, he has a chance. But if he starts internalizing who he is as just a football player, because that is what he does, that's what he gets all the recognition for. That's how he, that's how he provides for his family. That's how he, I mean, that's, that's his whole identity. Um, as a bad day, bad game, bad week, whatever the case may be, as an injury, uh, those kind of guys can go in the tank really fast and they can, they can take a deep dive. They can crash hard. Because they're, they've got identity confusion, because who they are as a man is tied up too much into 
the identity of being a football player. And pro mindset, when I coach people, when I communicate with clients, who you are and what you do are two separate things. Don't get me wrong, the importance of making it, the importance of making the money, the importance of living out your dream, those are obviously important things, but it still does not define who you are. Moving into strategies for success. I think one of the most important strategies is visualization. I recommend to players every night, picture yourself uh, the next day, performing at your best in whatever opportunities you have. If it's a preseason game, you're the star of the game. If it's just a normal practice, team period, one-on-ones, seven-on-seven, inside team drill, your inside run drill, it doesn't matter what it is. You have to see it before you can do it. And it isn't just in big games where you, you visualize yourself making the scoring the winning touchdown, catching the winning pass, or in basketball, making the winning shot, you know, or any sport, you know, baseball, hitting the Hitting the home run, the, the walk-off homer in the bottom of the ninth. Those are all like normal. Everybody has those. But to really be successful and utilize the power of visualization, you have to do it every day. And you have to do it for what's coming next, not just the bottom of the ninth, not just the end of the game. Hey, it could be Indy period. It could be any part of practice. You need to see yourself doing great before practice even starts, so that when you show up for practice, you've already been there before, you've already succeeded, and now your your mind is gonna give your body permission to be everything you can be because you've already done it in your mind. The second success strategy for guys in training camp is to create a performance bubble. That's a, a stable in the Pro Mindset program, and that is having anchors and having boundaries. And the boundaries separate the things that are for you from the things that um, are not for you. So the things that are for you get to come in the performance bubble. The things that don't do not get to come in. And let's, let's focus on the things that don't just for a moment. The things that don't are the distractions, um, your reps and practice, attention or not. You're, let's say you're not getting a lot of attention from your position coach. Maybe the media did a projection of, who, these are the guys we expect to make the 53, and you're not on it. The media doesn't get to come in. The fact that you could make millions of dollars in your salary, if you make it, doesn't get to come in. Because when you start bringing in outcomes and results into the bubble, you can't play your best. Um, maybe you got in a fight with a loved one. That doesn't get to come in. Maybe the coach... Uh, used you as an example of how not to do something in the, in the previous meeting and everybody was laughing because you did something that you wish you wouldn't have did. That doesn't get to come in your performance level. But here's what gets to come in. Your belief in who you are, but confidence in what you do. Those come in in spades. And then when those come in, you get freedom because you're keeping things out and get the freedom to flow, the freedom to, to play, the Freedom, freedom to perform. You also have the peace of mind. You're also going to have no fear and no doubts because then fears and doubts are left at the front door. They don't get to come in. So if a player really operates with a performance bubble in every facet of training camp, especially the, the practices and the games, gives that player the best opportunity to be as fast in those big moments. Last thing that I would recommend for success strategy for training camp is to learn from the vets. I would learn more from what they do than what they say. If a player's been in the league for 10 years, he's got great habits. He shows up a certain, he shows up differently. You want to show up like that guy. Rookies look differently than vets. They look different. You can, you can go to an NFL training camp as a fan and just watch the players and not even know who they are, and you can tell these, this, guy, this guy's a rookie. He's the guy that's looking at the crowd. He's the guy that's signing every autograph. He's the guy that's like, he, he's distracted. The vets are locked in. The vets focus. For whatever team period they're in, whatever practice they're in, they're locked in. And after practice, they're hugging their wife and kids, meeting their friends, 
and they're not, they're not, they may be stressed out, but they're not really stressed out. They don't perform stressed out. The next thing I would say is let's go to final cuts. Woo! This is where it's at, baby. You make it, you get paid. You make it, you get accredited season. You make it, you get to travel. This is what you dreamed of. This is what you showed up for. This is what you signed up for. But 37 guys don't make it. And of the 53 that make it because of waiver claims that teams make to try to improve their the roster by going and getting somebody else's wave player that they think is better than the guy they got on their team. The last three or four guys on a 53-man roster are not safe. So you really don't want to focus on making the 53. You really want to focus on making like the 40. Because if you make the 40, you're good. If you make the 53, you might not be good. So every single year, not necessarily every single team, but every single year there's 10, 15 players sometimes multiple players in the same team that make the 53, they're calling home and saying, I made it. This is the final cut day. I made it. And they did. But then all the, all the guys that were cut, and there's like 37% of the league, whatever it is, 33% of the league are cut all in the same day. They're all put on waivers, and 24 hours later, the teams can pick them up. And the team, there's, like I said, 15, 20 guys that made it. That are getting called on by, called in by the GM the next day to say, hey, you made it. You did a great job. We really love you a lot. But we were able to pick somebody up off waivers that we didn't think we were going to get. And we got to let you go. But in most of those cases, they're like, but if nobody picks you up on waivers, we want to sign you back to the practice squad. So it's just a more extended road. It's like a longer path to getting to the practice squad. So instead of just getting cut like everybody else and going on the practice squad, you make it and then you get cut because they signed somebody else and you end up on the practice squad. Very, very disheartening. Very disheartening. One of the things that players struggle with when they get cut and they get signed to a practice squad, they got to show up for practice the next day. And it's, show, it's go time, it's show time. Teams don't care. It's, hey, it's a business. This is where the pros, the ultimate pros, regardless of whether you're making ten, eleven thousand a week or if you're making three million a week, they're showing up as a prepared person. Like it's a real job. And what typically happens and 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 does happen every year, there's some dude who gets signed, gets cut, the final cuts, gets signed to the practice squad. Team doesn't plan it on plan them. Something happens in practice, injury-wise, with one of the guys in the 53. And all of a sudden, that guy that was on the practice squad is playing week one in the regular season. So when I talk about roller coaster, I mean, it's a roller coaster. You make it, then you don't make it, then you sign to the practice squad so you don't think you're going to play. Next thing you know, two days before the, the first game, you get a call saying, hey, me, you're traveling. And then you're on the field for opening day in the NFL. After just going through that. So it's very, very important that players stay even keel. And the only way you can do that is when you separate who you are from what you do. Because if you see yourself only as a football player, man, oh man, did you just go through the roller coaster, the emotional ups and downs. But if you stand in your worth and football is just what you do, you're able to stay steady through that entire, all those transactions, all those changes. When some guys are getting really high, you're not high. When then some guys are getting really low, you're not low. Because football is what you do, not who you are. Okay. We've got a couple of closing thoughts. I uh, want to share some final reflections on this process, the last five episodes, including today. If a young man, regardless whether he's 35 and this is his 10th, 12th year in the league, or if it's a rookie, this is his first time, is to enjoy the journey, to pursue the dream. And ultimately, results matter. But what matters more is do you show up every day and are you performing your best? And when a player shows up every day, performs his best, and separates who he is from what he does, it's all going to take care of itself. And there's a lot of players that, for some reason, play great in training camp and still don't make it. And they end up getting picked up by another team. And they play for 10 years for a different team. 
most of us, if we get fired, we feel dejected, rejected, disappointed, all those types of things. But in the NFL, it's just it's just another day in the NFL. Guys get get cut. They 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 change status and with their contracts. They change teams. Very 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 few players that play in the NFL play for one team. Tom Brady played for two. Brett Favre played for four. Peyton Manning played for two. Joe Montana played played for two. Jerry Rice played for two or three. So it's like it it's a it's a business, and it's more about how you show up than hoping that it's all going to work out and being disappointed if you get let go. I had a client that was cut five times in 22 months and ended up uh, playing 11 seasons, being a five-time captain, two-time Super Bowl winner. Bottom line is a player's not defined by the times he gets cut. A player's defined by how he responds after he gets cut because he will get cut in most cases. And you will change teams. Thank you very much for joining me on this five episode training camp journey. Um, I want to remind you again about my Pro Mindset book. You can get your own copy on craigdoman.com. And I want you guys to go have an awesome day today. Thank you very much. It's Craig Doman, the host of Pro Mindset Podcast. I want to thank you for listening or watching today's show. And you can catch us every week on the normal social media platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and all the listening uh, podcast platforms. I hope you enjoyed today's show. And more importantly, I hope you gained a pro mindset insight. Please be sure to rate and review Pro Mindset Podcast. And I look forward to catching up with you on our next show.